everyone and welcome to our online service for C3 Fremantle and C3 Wellard. It's great to have you with us. I hope you're doing well. This morning you are going to be encouraged. We've got Pastor Nigel with a follow-up message on his book of Jonah and it's just going to be a great encouraging service. So let's get started.
Hi guys, great to be back online with you. Yes, it's Pastor Nigel. Andrew and I send our regards to everyone at both locations and we hope you're doing well under, well, you're out of lockdown now. We're pretty good here in Perth, really. We get over things quickly. Must be our amazing premiere. Anyway, moving on. Try not to laugh, Claire. Okay, <laughs> I wanna to talk to you this morning about an army of one. Do you know that you can be an army of one? I'm just leaving it there to hang on purpose because Jonah was the kind of man that was given more than one opportunity even though he messed up. And I don't know about you, but I am sure that you're like me because we're all human and that we don't always get things right or sometimes we think we're right but we're not and this is a great story for us the story of Jonah just to recap a little bit the first couple of chapters was about grace and sin Jonah ran away from God running from God is sin Grace is God pursuing us even though we're doing the wrong thing until we recognize our wrongs. And Jonah actually repented in the whale of the fish. And so we're going to look at a little bit of this story again today. Uh, and I've called it, as, you, as you've already heard, an army of one. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria which today is, can you guess, modern day Iraq. And so it's a very interesting, because as we know, there's turmoil still there today, but at the time it was the greatest city in the world. And Jonah was asked by God to go there. They were not Christian and basically say, repent or die. Perhaps when you consider that, you and I would probably run as well rather than do what God has asked us to do, if we're honest with ourselves. Anyway, let's move on. It, it, here's an interesting fact about the city, though, Nineveh. It took approximately three days to walk through the city. That's how large it was. And for those times, and uh, another interesting fact that I read is that uh, there was no army in the whole entire world that could uh, go around the circumference of the city. So it was basically impenetrable for those times because obviously they didn't have bombs. And so uh, it was just a mighty, mighty city. God can change and shake up anything. And... Even though Jonah thought that God was probably a maniac or mad, God always can do things that are, seem incomprehensible to us. And God took this one man, Jonah, as an army of one. He said, go into that city and this time 
it actually says in the first verse, and perhaps uh, uh, those of you uh, who are open on Jonah chapter 3 and verse 1, because basically it's the first, it's the 10 verses that I'm referring to, although I'm not going to read them out today, but the first verse says, For the second time Jonah went and preached to the city of Nineveh. In other words, he messed up the first time, but God doesn't wasn't done with Jonah and God's not done with you. And God can change the most ungodly into the godly. And this is quite a remarkable story. Interesting though, like you and I, God first must besiege a person. How many times have you thought that that's not going to work or I can't get that, I can't do that thing or, or I'm just not good at that and yet God's used you and you've overcome. God gets into your heart. He gets into your life. When you read God's word like we're reading Jonah, well, we were reading Jonah. Well, I know we've moved on now, but I'm still a Jonah. And Stephen said I could stay in Jonah and I'm happy about that. And it's interesting to me that you and I all have dreams, particularly when we're younger. Now, I would be very aware, and uh, Claire's filming me, and I'm aware of her children, and when my children were younger. Now, what do kids want to do, or what do they, if you ask them, what do you want to be when they're growing up? How many of them if, are going to say, I want to be a fireman? Or how many of them are going to say, I want to be a doctor, or I want to be an ambulance officer? Because there's something about our human DNA which comes from God. We all want to save the day. There's something in us that where we all want to be heroes. Why? Do, how many movies are there that you watch that it's all about the hero or the hero? Um, what's the woman term for that? Anyway, heroess. <laughs> and uh, you know you don't have to look too far. The Marvel series, which everyone seems to be onto at the moment, I don't know why, but it's all about heroes. Vin Diesel, if we go back to my era, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone. That it's all about heroes, and so. We all love heroes and women heroes too. And as we grow up, we realize it's not such an easy thing to be what we think we can be. There are political issues. There are uh, natural life issues. Things are a lot tougher, right? And so Dorothy Sayers was a Christian writer born in 1893 who influenced the 19th century positively. And one of her most recognized sayings was this, man is never truly himself except when he is actively creating something. And Dorothy also wrote this, the sin of our times, now this, don't forget, this is the 19th century, and she wrote this in the 1800s. The sin of our times now is not power-hungry materialism, it's not a permissive spirit of lawlessness, but rather, she said, the sin that believes in nothing, that's the problem. Hates nothing. Does this sound like today? Finds purpose in nothing. Enjoys nothing. Lives for nothing. And remains alive for there is nothing for which it will die. Dorothy was definitely onto something. And there is nothing bigger than my needs and my own interests. Aren't we glad for those of us who know the Lord and you have an opportunity today to receive God as your Lord and Saviour that when we get out of our own thinking, even a little bit, and allow God in, that we get purpose for our lives beyond ourselves. And suddenly we have a future and nothing is... We can't do nothing. It's impossible. Because God's given us all the same DNA, like those little children. We all can be a hero or heroess. What's the word? I keep forgetting it. Anyway, for, for the Lord. And so I want to give you a couple of points. I'll just scroll through my uh, notes here because I was going to preach last weekend, but couldn't. Um, so, one, persistent grace. Jonah 
has let God down. We know that from the reading of this chapter, that again, the second time, he's going again. It's almost like he's been corp marshaled by God. Jonah ran away. He said to himself, what's the point? And Jesus did a similar thing with Peter. Other than Judas, Peter had the worst trek track record of all the disciples he walked away from God he went back to his fishing and decided that uh, he was in fact he even denied God three times when the, the the soldiers asked him so I think that you and I have hope when we recognize this story the Jonah principle is that there is life out of death There is what? There's life out of death. And so failure actually makes us useful. Oh, come on. Let's let's finish strong here. Failure makes you useful. Only an evil, adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign, Matthew 16 says. But the only sign I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. The Pharisees came to Jesus explaining this verse and say, if you are the Messiah, do a great miracle. And what Jesus says is, you will know who I am by my weaknesses, not by my strengths. Jesus spent three days in the tomb. Like Jonah's three days in the fish. What is dead or perceived to be no good, God resurrects. Will you let him resurrect your failures? Will you let him resurrect who you are or who you think you are? Because God has bigger plans for you. It's out of Jesus' death that you and I receive life. It's when we say, you know what? I need help in my life. I need Jesus as my saviour in my life that things will turn around for you. When Jonah said, you know what? I'm just going to do what God asked me to do. That is when, as you can read in this chapter and in the following, that the whole city, 120,000, turned back to God. Now, Jonah wasn't very happy about it, but that's coming next. That's another message. And so it's amazing that God will use our mistakes to bring glory and to build his kingdom. Let us pray today. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that amidst my failures, You have got me. That amidst all of our misgivings, you still care about us. And I thank you, Lord, today that there is a a purpose for my life beyond my mistakes or how I feel. And I submit myself into your hands today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. wanted to share some encouragement around our giving you know I've always been somebody who has always wanted to do things the right way and one of the challenges with that is when it came to tithing and offering I always try to work out 10% and what 10% look like and you know do I give after the net or after the gross and it was just really confusing for me And this word really helped me from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, 
think about such things. Now, thinking about such things is not about just putting your feet up and just going to dreamland. It actually is about taking action. It's about the things that are right, that you know are right, is what you should focus on. And that really helped me. I was like, I can do that. If I can think about what's excellent, right, then that can move me away from wanting to calculate amounts. Because what that does is, if you focus on amounts and calculating, then you don't actually allow yourself to give to God because you're so stuck in doing things a certain way. So I just wanted to encourage you and say, if you're struggling with how to give, just go ahead and focus on doing the right thing, doing the excellent thing and just give. And in time, you'll see that God will honor that. So much for watching it's been great having you with us and hey if you would like to get in contact with us we'd love to hear from you if you have any prayer requests or perhaps you've got some good news stories you'd like to share we want to stay connected with you coming up in a minute there will be some contact details that you can either call or email us It'd be great to hear from you hope you have a great rest of the week and we'll see you next sunday